to today's webinar. This is a pre-recorded webinar about eddy current testing with our speaker, Jeff Podesto, who is the Western Regional Manager for Caloris Engineering based out in California. Between him and myself, we are your contacts if you are interested in pursuing eddy current testing in your facility. And he's gonna talk about what eddy current testing is and what it can show you about your evaporator. Um, before we get started, the advantage to this being a pre-recorded webinar is nobody needs to worry about being muted. However, we won't have the opportunity for live questions during today's session. So if you do have any questions, you can reach us at problem.solved at caloris.com or call 410-822-6900 and ask for sales. Both of those will reach me and then I can get you in touch with Jeff. Um, we have this link here on your screen. If you are interested in pursuing eddy current testing, you can go there and fill out the form and we will contact you. And a brief plug for our weekly e-newsletter. This goes out on Wednesday mornings. We promise not to spam you and it is more than just an ad about Caloris. We include industry news, plant management resources, market headlines, and more in that. So you can point your phone at this QR code on your screen and when you click it, it'll take you to the sign-up form for our e-newsletter. I'll be posting all of this information again at the end of the webinar. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and Jeff, that will give you the opportunity to do so. And I will turn it over to you. Thanks, Missy. Um, I'm Jeff Podesto, and I handle the West Coast operations for um, Caloris. And uh, recently, we've been working on some... Um, ways to analyze evaporators, especially the older evaporators. A lot of the evaporators in the in the Central Valley now are, are reaching 25, 30 years old, and we're starting to see some degradation. And we're trying to come up with solutions to provide us information to allow us to uh, do uh, reasonable repairs to these evaporators. Um, what you're seeing on the screen right now is, is uh, an eddy current scorecard, uh, basically, this is the uh, byproduct of testing with an eddy current system. Um, that's looking down on the top of an evaporator that has about 1,500 tubes. And, um, you know, a quick analysis would be to tell you that the blue tubes are, the blue dots are good tubes, the red dots are bad tubes, and the colors in between that uh, represent tubes that uh, have some level of degradation and help us determine what's going on in the evaporator. Um, I'm gonna leave that up for now, and then I'm gonna take you through a, a, a test. I'll just give you a little feedback on eddy current testing. I think we all know that that finding, uh, you know, leaks in an evaporator usually means it's an after the fact situation um, where we've got product that's showed up in the condensate, and then we know that we have tubes leaking. Um, that leads us to having to do repair, which is even worse because that usually means we've got to shut down, clean the evaporator. We've got to plug the bottom of the tubes, uh, fill those tubes with water and just to see which ones leak out and then plug those tubes off uh, so that they don't uh, you know, negatively affect the operation um, of the evaporator going forward. What we're left with though is, you know, why did this tube leak and where is the next tube that's going to leak coming from. Um, so a path towards kind of finding out a little bit more about the evaporator is to use eddy current testing, and it helps us pinpoint the problem areas of existing evaporators. Um, and then we can, you know, when we pinpoint those problems, then we can do targeted repairs, you know, and potentially, you know, save downtime or even complete replacement of evaporators. Um, eddy current testing provides mechanical integrity analysis along the entire length of the evaporator tube. That's the important part um, because we're able to read the, the, the entire length, determine whether there's a particular depth in which um, we're seeing mechanical failure or whether the, that um, failures are all along the, the complete length of the tube, um, which usually tells us whether there's 
corrosion issues or mechanical issues with the tubes. I'm going to take you through a test real quick, and then I'll give you a little feedback on a couple of these that we've done so that you can see what we've been able to achieve uh, through eddy current testing. So typically what is required is that you would need to um, clean your evaporator and remove the top from of the evaporator. Uh, as you can see in one of these passes, there's a coil of, of wire here, um, which is attached to a probe. And then that probe is dropped down the length of each one of the tubes. Um, and that information that comes back is delivered into, um, into a computer. And, and there is a software package that goes along with, uh, with the, the probe that analyzes uh, what is you know, happening in, in the tube. The, what the system does is it actually, we, we put this, pro this probe into a, a reference tube, which, is, which is, has no failures or flaws in it. And that sets the target or, or what, a, what a clean and, and new tube should look like. And then we send the, the probe down the um, tubes that are on the evaporator and the, the differences between the reference tube and the actual tube is what allows us to determine what's happening on the tube. Um, the magnetic field travels out from the probe and then the feedback comes back into the uh, the computer and uh, then we know the variance between a good tube and what's happening in the existing tubes. We, we're sure that we're, we take a good, uh, anal we analyze the existing um, evaporator to you know make sure we know where all the entry points are where vapors are coming in where vapors are leaving where things where condensate should drain out so you know along with that we make sure that we understand the the piece of equipment thoroughly um, so because the feedback that we get from the test along with where all of these inlets and outlets are to each one of the evaporators helps us make a decision on what's going on the feedback that we get looks something like this. Um, and though it's not something that really means a lot to, to the layman, it does tell the technician uh, what's going on um, in each one of these tubes. This is actually three different tubes. One tube here, one tube here, one tube here. As this is the top of the evaporator. As it drops down, you get these little deflections and each one of these deflections is some type of data point that that uh, that the technician and or the software package can determine um, what type of flaw might exist at each one of those um, deflections. That information gets converted into a table, something like this, where each one of the tubes um, is analyzed and then if a tube is good it'll it'll and it and it seems to have uh, no degradation it'll be given a uh, an NDD certification if it has some kind of, of failure it'll explain what that failure is it'll give us a percentage of what failure we have a 45 percent failure that means that we've we've got a some type of uh, indent or or impact um, to the tube and 45% of the thickness is gone in that particular area and we have a depth. This is what's really important is that uh, from the top of the evaporator 26 feet down, uh, that's where the failure point is um, on that particular tube. When you get down to an area like th this where we've got a lot of failures in an area and they're all in a particular area. And what's interesting about this is that we find that the depths are all over the place. Some of them are, are 30 feet down. Some of them are only 19 feet down. Some of them are 13 feet down. That's important because it tells us that, that we've got failures along the whole length of the tube and not in any particular depth in, um, in the tubes. Uh, this kind of leans towards us beginning to realize that maybe we've got some type of corrosion situation going on or we've got a, uh, the effects of maybe a CIP wash on the tubes 
um, but it's important data that allows us to determine from the testing what might be going on and why the evaporator is failing. In this case, those last two charts would be converted to what we have here, which is another score, which is a scorecard um, that goes that that relates to the two tests that we just showed you. And um, this is the third effect. Um, and there are four of, of an evaporator system. And in this case, there's four passes in this third effect. Um, the uh, lowest concentration leading all the way around the, uh, to the highest concentration, which is in this lower left hand corner. And what we begin to see is that most of the failure is happening in the higher concentrations. Um, and from the data, we know that um, that failure is along the whole length of the tubes. And from that, we can tell that we've got a corrosion issue probably happening, we're fairly sure. And we know that the product is is has a salt content in it and at a higher concentration that can be have negative effects on the materials of construction of these tubes. And um, so the feedback tells us we've got a corrosion problem. It's in the highest concentrations. And in this case, the customer basically just took this fourth pass and shut it off and quit using it. Uh, that was a reasonable um, recommendation and option, and it allowed um, them to continue operating and making decisions on what they're going to do with this last quadrant. Um, could be retube, could be, um, or, or they could decide to replace the whole calandria. Those are uh, uh, some of their options that they're looking at right now. But they do have a short term solution, which is just not to use this section and block it off. I go to another back to our original eddy current scorecard that we showed uh, that we started the uh, analysis with. And what we have determined from this scorecard is that um, we have a lot of failure up in this uh, upper left hand corner. And what we do know from knowing the mechanical design of the evaporator is that's where the vapors enter the calandria. Um, this calandria is about 30 years old, so it's had uh, a fairly good life and it's it's seen a lot of uh, time and um, and we're we're guessing that there's vibration over here that comes from these vapors entering the uh, the unit and we're fairly confident that the depth of this uh, is probably only two or three tubes deep and therefore we'll be able to come back around and probably um, block these tubes off, plug them completely and um, and continue to operate this evaporator um, as you know as in normal operation. Uh, along with the customer we did an engineering evaluation of what the losses would be if we were to plug a certain percentage of the tubes and based on our analysis um, we were able to determine that he would that they would see fairly negligible reductions in uh, capacity if any at all so eddy current testing is very effective at uh, at helping us determine uh, you know what's going on uh, with the evaporator, why it may be be failing, where those failures are, and then in the end, it helps us determine whether, you know, are we going to repair the evaporator? Should we uh, retube the evaporator? Or should we just replace the evaporator completely, the whole calandria? Um, but we're able to at least pinpoint that and provide the customer with uh, enough information that they can make a, an economic decision um, that it can be supported by their company. Um, and so we feel strongly that eddy current testing is something that, especially with these older evaporators, which, you know, you, you get to 25 or 30 years, it's a lot of service and it's a, it's a great opportunity to understand what you have left. Um, in many cases, um, you know, you might have another 15 years of solid service left if you handle the um, the repairs correctly. 
So that's uh, any current testing and, and how to get the best out of it. And we think it, it kind of goes together with, uh, you know, you any current test and you do an engineering evaluation and we can handle both ends of that. We can pro provide the eddy current testing. Uh, we use a third party and then we can provide the uh, engineering evaluation um, to to help you and your uh, group determine what may be the best path forward uh, for your equipment. All right. Well, thanks, Jeff. I have a few questions um, in lieu of having an audience live with us to be able to ask them. In this particular SCART card that we're looking at right now, there's a lot of tubes that don't have any color associated with them. Is that because those particular tubes were not tested? Yeah, that that is that is the case. Um, that's a good question. We typically we can do 250 to 300 tubes in a day. In this case, customer had only one day to give us so we had to um, kind of target particular areas uh, with the hope that we would be able to find um, you know where the problem areas are and where there may not be problems um, and in this case we're actually going to go back and do another day's worth and we're going to spend most of our time on on that first section determining determining how deep uh, the damages are and and so that we can refine exactly uh, what tubes should be plugged going forward for the customer. And that sort of answers my next question, which was how long does one of these tests typically take since it does require a shutdown, correct? It does. It requires a shutdown and that and the evaporator to be completely clean. Um, so, you know, a, a CIP would need to be done prior to us doing the eddy current testing. And would you say one day is typical or have you had cases that have gone beyond that? Oh yeah, uh, as you can see in the in the one before this, just to give you an idea, they did the whole evaporator. So basically every tube was done in this one, in this evaporator, they just wanted to understand, you know, the depth of the problem, which was probably a good idea because you can see losses across the board, um, uh, you know, even in the, in the uh, lower concentrations on this unit, um, there are some areas where they're beginning to see some trouble areas. Mm -hmm. And how long did that test take? Do you remember? This is about a this is about three or four day down days here. That's good. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. And um, you were talking about how this could be saving the customer in terms of costly repairs that maybe they don't need. How much would you say one of these tests would cost. I know that it depends on how many tubes are actually tested, correct? Yes, but you do you do one, you know, a day or two of testing and then a, a little and some engineering evaluation probably will run somewhere between twenty five to fifty thousand dollars. And and depending on how much engineering evaluation obviously and how much uh, um, uh, testing goes on, uh, you know, multiple days. But uh, so I say the bottom, the low end is probably twenty-five thousand dollars. The top end is probably fifty, and that would give you a, a really good um, feedback on where your equipment uh, lies at this point. And with stainless steel pricing where it is these days, the the more you can save on that end of things, the better. So this would be a really good upfront investment in regards to determining what repairs would be needed. Uh, yeah, if you look at just this customer right here where the scorecards up uh, a replacement calandria is is in the probably three million dollar area um by the time it's installed and running versus um probably in the end you know fifty thousand dollars for testing another less than fifty thousand dollars for plugging and repairing and 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 with the knowledge that they can probably run for another um 10 or 15 years pretty comfortably with a hundred thousand dollar investment all right well thanks jeff I, i've pulled up our slide here again for folks if they are interested in following up with us to learn more about an eddy current test you can either use the link on the left hand side here to sign up for a test or if you want to ask us a question you can use the contact information on the right hand side problem.solved at caloris.com or 410-822-6900. And then one final plug here for our weekly e-newsletter. Uh, this is where you can be the first to know about webinars like this one. And 
uh, speaking of webinars, if anybody has a suggestion for a future topic you'd like us to cover, please feel free to reach out to us with your ideas. So thanks again, Jeff. Really appreciate it. And we'll talk to you soon. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you.